Welcome to making a Stuart model steam plant. This is part 58. Making the heat insulation panels, assembling the new Stuart 504 boiler and fitting it to the mounting base. However, I'm starting the video with none of those things. What I'm doing at the moment is using my small Proxon motor tool to drill some slight indentations in the burner. I know where to drill them because the grub screws originally made marks in these places. All I'm doing is deepening the marks and here I'm showing the tightening of the grub screws and now they go into the burner itself so it cannot possibly work loose. I don't mean right into the burner, they're only shallow indentations, just enough to take the points of the grub screws. The base and burner holder has been sprayed with heat resistant paint and it seems to be quite tenacious stuff, I haven't managed to chip any of it off yet. I also use the same paint for the outside area of the side panels and as you can see it gives a very nice flat finish. The next part of this job is really horrible. This bit isn't, all I'm doing is taking a measurement of the side panel. But the next part is positively dangerous because I'm going to be using some rat proof chicken wire which is really nasty sharp stuff. I need to cut two panels from this material and I'm going to really try hard not to stick any of this in my hand. Those bits that are sticking out are very sharp. I'm cutting this chicken wire with my special pair of scissors. These are very old, original Sheffield steel scissors and the firm is still in existence today. And these scissors, remarkably, are still sharp after such abuse. They will still cut paper and cloth and things like that. Once I'd cut the two panels to size, I ground off the sharp edges on my linisher. I've paused the video so you can see. This piece of mesh is going to be folded, but I need to cut it to the same width as the boiler panels first. After cutting these pieces to the correct length, once again using my linisher, I remove the sharp edges. In this clip I'm folding one of the pieces in half and this is not as easy as it looks. You have to constantly persuade it to stay square. I hammered down the edge, then opened it up again and fitted the first layer of this thermal insulation. After which, using the same much abused pair of scissors, I'm cutting this stuff to length. A final gentle tap with the mallet and the piece of heat resistant material is firmly sandwiched between the first of the two pieces of folded, rat-proof chicken wire. Here I'm folding the other piece in exactly the same way, and you will notice there's no blood yet. There's more than enough bloodshed and destruction going on in the world at the moment without me adding to it on my workbench. And here to prove that are two completely blood-free insulation panels for inside the boiler. That's the fun part over with, now for the difficult bit. I laid a couple of pieces of cloth on the workbench so I didn't scratch the outer part of the panel. And this is where the first of the two heat shields is going to be. A belt and braces approach is required here, so I'm using another piece of insulation material which I put on the side panel first, making sure that this piece of heat insulation material sticks up slightly at the top. This clip shows a much clearer picture of what I'm doing. The reason for doing this is to make sure that the top part of the side panel doesn't get too hot. The original versions of the 500 series boilers used two specially shaped pieces of asbestos, but of course we can't use that anymore. It's not a good idea to try and stick this insulation to the boiler side panels because eventually it will fall off. By using the rat proof chicken wire method, this insulation is held in place very well. This part of the job is difficult and very fiddly and I don't want to mark the paintwork. I'm using my scriber here to align the hole at the bottom while I screw in a bolt at the top. And once I've done that, I remove the scriber and screw in a bolt at the bottom. Surplus material can be easily removed with either a Stanley knife blade or in this case, the side of a rule. Please note that you must not over tighten these brass dome headed machine screws. They need to be sufficiently tight just to hold the panels in place. 
Here's the final one going in position, and as you can see, there is some white stuff showing in the gap between this side panel and the cast iron mountings. I'll show you what to do about that later on in the series. This is the easy part of the job. Because I drilled the holes in the right place, it was a simple job to just fit the countersunk machine screws and then using my Barco spanner, tighten a nut onto the top of each one. These will eventually be painted so they don't go rusty. This series is taking a long time to complete for various reasons. One is the goalposts started to be moved early on because in the first place I was supposed to be building a steam plant using parts supplied by the customer. But all the parts supplied by the customer needed extensive work, particularly the double 10 engine. I'm not complaining, it's just taking a bit longer than I anticipated. And the other reason is I need to do some work outside, sanding the baseboard for instance. And annoyingly the weather has been totally unsuitable, but suddenly it's a lot better. But unfortunately, I have to go into hospital next week for a biopsy. And I'm told not to do any strenuous work. So that will have to wait and I'll be able to put my feet up and play Skyrim. And if anyone's interested, I've just reached level 100 on the wonderful computer game on my Xbox known as Skyrim. And hopefully, once I'm back in the workshop, which shouldn't be long, one of the first jobs will be to paint the chimney. And that's it for this episode. Here's the boiler with the side panels and the heat insulation fitted to the base. Stay safe and healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.